Well, hello and welcome to Talk Time. And this week, we're going to be talking about free expression, the right of free expression, in relation to the closure of 30 radio stations or more by the National Communications Authority and matters arising therefrom. Welcome to Talk Time. a dry and yam a pin for one warm and man for a name of fra when you fear do me. Well, hello, welcome back to Talk Time. And this week we are looking at issues hinging on the right of free expression, media freedoms, and so on. We're going to be talking specifically about the closure of more than 30 radio stations in Ghana. What are the full implications? What are the reasons? Are they justified or not? And we'll probably be talking about the demonstration organized by the Free Media Vanguard. And uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Pris Menka, the convener of the Free Media Vanguard. So you're welcome to the studio. Thank you so much, Uncle yes, Kwesi. Sir. The Free Media Vanguard, what is it? Well, Free Media Vanguard is a <coughs> pressure group and it comprises of journalists and well-meaning Ghanaians who stand for one thing and one thing only. Freedom of expression, freedom of the media, the will that's given to us, the God-given right that is given to us to operate freely in as much as we also exercise our responsibilities as journalists. And you know, we are the voices of the people. We are the ones that the people would want to channel their grievances through in order to reach whether political authority or any other authority in order to trigger the needed change. So Free Media Vanguard basically is a pressure group. What, what gave birth, what, what, what conditions gave birth to this pressure group? Well, the conditions are quite obvious, isn't it, Angle Kwesi, that we are in a country where trailblazers like you have fought so hard to ensure that journalists are able to do their work in an environment that has been applauded by many, that Lugana has enjoyed media freedom for some time now. But in recent times, what we've witnessed is a suppression of that freedom. And it's quite evident in recent cases that's got to do with journalists whose lives are being threatened after various investigative pieces that they've done. A clear example is Manasi Azuri of Multimedia Joy FM, whose life was threatened. Uh, another example that we could cite, which is quite recent, is that of Edward Adetti. And very, very recent was that of uh, Wisdom Heather Jome. And then what for us, and, and when I say for us, I'm talking about the, the, the leading uh, voices as far as free media uh, Vanguard is concerned, is the closure, the manner in which radio stations were closed down. In your intro, you mentioned 30 and still counting because you never know who, where the next stop would be as far as the NCA is concerned. And we are talking about the manner in which they closed down these radio stations. And we forcefully have said in our various communication that the manner they did it was arbitrary, it was unjust, it was unfair. And I'm sure as we move on when, in the conversation, I would explain why. You mentioned a number of names, Manasseh, Azure, uh, Adeti, and so on. I mean, what happened to them? Okay. In the case of Manasseh, Azure, uh, a inv investigative reporter with Joy FM, my former colleague, I used to work with him, very hard-working young man who's done a lot of investigative pieces. The last time he did one was in uh, the Mahama administration about the Ford saga. And his very recent one, which has gotten his which has gotten to a point where his life is being threatened is the investigative piece he did 
about a militia, uh, some sort of a group that were training within the Osu Castle, which now government is saying is not a security zone or uh, an annex to the seat of government. But that's, as far as history is concerned, that's what we've known that place to be. So he did this investigative piece, uncovered this particular training facility or this training ongoing within that particular uh, installation. And he did a documentary, put it on national TV, Joy News, Multi TV, and it was on radio. And various conversations, it triggered a lot of conversation, national conversation about, uh, and, and it came at a time where the country was talking about uh, these militia group, Ayaso West Wagon was still fresh on the minds of a number of Ghanaians. A uh, number of, uh, if you will, a conversation came, a number of arguments came, a number of, um, uh, if you will, um, defenses came from, from government. So, following this revelation, Manasi Azure reported, it was reported widely in the media, that he says his life is being threatened. He was getting calls from strange, strange numbers, strange people, saying that they were going to end his life. And what we know, based on reports that we've picked, and I've spoken to people within the multimedia group, is that Manasi can no longer stay live in his home. Uh, he's had to be moving around. Some even suggest that he, he traveled outside the country because of the fear for his life. And then the Edward at the T was also another, he's also another journalist that works with Star FM EIB Network. And he did a report about the rot in the Galamse sector. And that report sort of indicted uh, Roxen uh, Bukhari, if, if, if you remember him. And um, eventually, you know what happened, he had to resign. I don't know whether he was forced to resign or he resigned voluntarily. Now, we know on the back of that report, there was an attempt, and that's the reason for the resignation, forced or whether he did that willingly. On the back of that particular report, Roxen Bukhari allegedly, through some other means, tried to bribe Edward Adetti, but something that he rejected. So, of course, the conversation was ongoing. It was building quite, a, quite an interesting story, triggered national conversation. And then one very fine morning, news broke that some unknown men or whoever they were broke into Edward Adetti's home, made away with some items, and the crime scene appeared as though it was one of those usual crime. But for a journalist who had made such a revelation, and for such, for such mayhem to have been visited on him. And lucky for him, he wasn't at home with his family. So point is, if he had been at home with his family, anything could have happened to him, especially in a, in a country where we've seen Ahmed Swale, another investigative journalist, killed in the manner in which he was killed. <coughs> so these are all issues that's got to do with our own colleagues and friends in the media uh, whose life are being threatened, for which we felt, look, Enough is enough. We need to talk about it and deal with this particular trend. Well, there have been some reports that your own car was, was vandalized. Is that report true? What's the extent of harassment that you appear to be facing? It is very true and quite shocking too. Never expected it. This is the first time any of anything of such manner has ever happened to me. I have only covered stories or, or events about people whose life have been threatened, journalists whose life have been threatened. I've only advocated that, just as I'm doing with the Free Media Vanguard, for an end to a trend of such nature. So when this mayhem was visited upon me, I was quite shocked. It happened just uh, uh, yesterday in the morning, early in the morning, around 2.30 to 3 a.m. And my wife prompted me that, she, she's hearing footsteps in our home. I was tired because we had done a de uh, the demonstration a day before. And I felt it was one of her usual, I usually call it hallucination. So I said, look, forget it. There's nobody out, nobody in our home. So just let's go back to sleep. And then 10 minutes later, I heard gunshots. And these were shots being fired by my neighbor. I got to know eventually. He was firing warning shots. And so it confirmed that indeed someone was in our home or some persons were, were, were in our home. So five minutes later, I heard 
a strong knock on my door, banging, and we were scared. I must be really honest. I was really, really scared. I mean, even though I was born in Liberia and I've seen people being shot and killed, never have I felt this scared before. So the banging kept going on and then it stopped and the place was quiet. Then I called a large my neighbor. He didn't pick. Then we waited for a while. Then he called back. So when he called back in his usual funny voice, he said, Charlie, come out. The people, they deal with you. Come out. Come and see your car. They finish you. So I, I came out of my apartment only to see my small saloon vehicle broken into. The passenger side, the, the windshield, had been, it was broken. I mean, the entire mirror, the entire shield had been broken. And there was this gaping hole. And I found a rag uh, spread on the ground, just close to the passenger side of the vehicle. And the booth of the vehicle had been opened. And the night before, I had placed the various documents that I had in, in my vehicle. And you know, the vehicle of every, most of the <laughs> most journalists, you will not find anything valuable. The most valuable thing you find are documents. And these documents for an activist like me were petitions, copies of petitions that we had sent to the U.S. Embassy, copies of petitions that we had sent to the U.K. High Commission, your, the press statements that we've, 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 we've issued out to the various media outlets. Mm -hmm. And these were copies. And they had been scattered all over the back seat. I had arranged them in such a way that if I wanted anything, I'd just reach out for it and I would be able to notice where they were. But this time mm -hmm. around, I came to see them scattered all over the place. And if you look at the scene, it was as though whoever or whichever persons they were, we're trying we're looking for something in those envelopes mm -hmm. they i thought if it was a car thief probably they would you know take out the battery or maybe the radio or the the the, the media system in the vehicle it didn't happen as such and it left us really traumatized and as if to justify what had occurred and i'm saying this because my suspicion has overstretched and i am not leaving any stone unturned I am not ruling out the possibility of anything. I say this because I have been trailed before by a certain V8 vehicle. The night we had a vigil at the Radio Gold premises, they trailed me from Radio Gold to where I live within Accra. And so I'm not ruling out the possibility of anything. And, and it left me quite shocked and, and scandalized. And I was wondering, a day, a, day before, a day after our demonstration, who would want to do this to me? Even if it's, it was a petty thief for anyone who just came in, what a coincidence it, it will be, you know, a day after a demonstration of such nature, which got a lot of attention, both local media and international media. A night before, I had been interviewed by the BBC on their Newsday program. So I was just shocked. And again, going back to the scene, to, as if to justify the entire event, they had also broken into my neighbor's vehicle, uh, Alaji. And with, his, with regards to his windshield, they are taking the entire thing out and it was right there on the ground. I've made a case. I've reported to the police station for security reasons. I will not mention which police station specifically it is, but I've reported the lead investigator was in my home with me yesterday. We, we relived the moment together. They've done the forensic and they've assured me that they're investigating the matter and when they get to the bottom of it, they will, they will let us know. But the wind of caution that I would want to throw, especially to most of the politicians that were with us on the demonstration, a number of Ghanaian journalists that came on the streets of Accra and walked with us whilst we presented our petition to the National Communication Authority is that, look, we are not in a safe environment. Ghana is no longer the same. We need to be cautious as far as our security is concerned. Let us not leave anything out. In fact, when you're being trailed by someone, what I did the last time I was being trailed from the vigil, I had to go to the, I almost mentioned the word the police station. I had to go to the police station, the police stop. And, and I parked there until the vehicle slowed down. When it reached where I had parked, it sped off just like that. So let's, let's not leave anything on turn. Let's just take our security I mean, cautiously, and, and I'm just praying that Ghana will not be like this forever. It will change, but we can just keep talking about it.
Well, we are talking to Prince Menka, who is a journalist from uh, Radio XYZ, but is also doubling as the convener for the free media vanguard. And he just told us the story about how his home was raided and his car was vandalized. We're going to go for a short break, and when we come back, I'd like him to tell us what he thinks was responsible for the vandalization of his car and whether he still feels threatened and what he's going to do about the shot. What's wrong? They took all my precious stuff. Did they harm you? Just when they were about to, they hit the siren and bolted. Scout the area. You don't have security cameras? They stole everything. I thought you used ghost cameras from security warehouse. Security warehouse? Yes, you should. They couldn't have gotten away the way they did without either being electrocuted or being caught on a CCTV camera. Welcome back to Talk Time, and we are in conversation with Prince Menka, who is the convener of the Free Media Vanguard and also a journalist of the closed XYZ FM station. Now, why do you think that your house was vandalized, your car was vandalized? I mean, what do you suspect to be the motive? I'm glad you asked this question. The motive could be anything. But what sticks out for me is the fact that a day after a demonstration, something of this sort will be visited upon me in my home. Now, your, my home is where I, feel, I am supposed to feel safe. My home is where anything that's got to do with my public life does, that doesn't exist any longer. Because when I, when I retire to my bed, it's all about family and nothing else. So when this was done in my home, I was very, very shocked. And, and, and again, in an environment, and we've been watching the trend. There's the Edward Adeti, there's the Wisdom Hedejome, there's the Manasi Azure, there's the Ahmed Swale. You remember the vitriolic attack on the person of Ahmed Swale, proud to his death by some what, high profile. What, what happened to Wisdom? Wisdom was beaten mercilessly by some task force of the Medina Assembly. Now, what Wisdom was basically doing was journalists. There's a decongestion exercise. He goes there to interview those affected. Gets tapped on the shoulder. He turns around. They ask him, who are you? I am Wisdom. I work with Radio XYZ and Power FM. What's your mission here? I'm only interviewing them, just asking them what they are, what's going on. And before he could answer the next question, a slap and then they started pulling him pulling him by his trousers beating mercilessly all because he was simply doing his job as a journalist he made a case to the police the police took it as though it was some joke he said the police person who he reported to said go and look for the witness who, who are your witnesses but at the police station wisdom said this and it does his account you could actually hear the chaotic or the, the, you could feel the the chaos within the environment within that particular terrain and so he was shocked that the policeman would ask him who are your witnesses that those people you hear are the witnesses go and ask them it happened to me so the system itself even myself when i reported to the police the, the manner in which i was received goes to suggest that look it's as if some fatigue or some people just don't really really care if crime is meted out to you it's as if Oh, it's normal. It happens to anyone, so it's normal. And because we are journalists, and I'm sure those who are not journalists, Ghanaians who these things happen to on a daily basis, if they had a platform, they will have different stories to share. So we are in a situation where, as far as security is concerned, Ghanaians are saying we are not safe. That's, what, that's, the, that's the chorus out there. We are not safe. Because 
systems are broken. Everyone seems not to care. Every institutions that you think you can trust and rely on seem to be given a posturing of, well, it's normal, it's okay. And so in that kind of environment, you wouldn't fault me, Uncle Kwesi, for thinking or even suspecting that I've been trailed before. Maybe someone somewhere who does not want me to continue to advocate for and against what is happening as far as the suppression of media freedom. We just want to put what they call the fear of God in me. But look, Uncle Kwesi, I am not perturbed. I've read and I've heard you and many others done this before. And if you're still a living proof and I'm here talking to you and it's a privilege and I'm humble doing this with you at this particular on this particular day, I am not frightened. I am not shaken. I will continue to advocate on the need to end this trend of suppressing media freedom. And Ghana had enjo has enjoyed it and all thanks to the likes of you and Haruna Atta and, 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 and Cabral Blay and me here, who are, who, are the, who are the trailblazers. And today, it looks as if we are going back. We can't do this to ourselves. We can't do this to our dear country, Ghana. Someone needs to stand for this. And even if it will cost the last breath in me, I am willing to stand firm and do this. Now, do you have any idea how far investigations have gone? Not just into your case, but all the other cases. Swari, Wisdom, Aditi, uh, yeah. Manasseh, Manasseh Azure. Azure. So, yeah. yeah. What we've heard so far in terms of the public statements that the Ghana Police Service have made in the case of Ahmed Swale, we heard that some suspects had been picked up. They ended up not being really connected to the case. That's Ahmed Swale. In the case of Edward Adeti, what I know is that police are still investigating and getting to the bottom of how his home was raided into. In the case of Wisdom Heather Jome, police still says we are investigating, even though they didn't give him the opportunity to, to be able to freely, you know, go about his, I mean, reporting the case in a manner in which he wanted to. In the case of Manasi Azure, we all know that Manasi no longer rises usual thought-provoking articles on social media and on, on his website. And that is evident of the fact that he's been silenced and he's no longer safe. We don't know where he is. We don't know even if he's in Ghana. Rumors have it that today is in this country, another day is in another country. And so it's, it's, it's just frightening and, and, and shocking that a country like Ghana would experience something like this. But Uncle Kwesi, let me just let me just review this. And I'm going to be very blunt with this gentleman that spoke on my matter yesterday. Yesterday, uh, today's Thursday, right? So yesterday, Wednesday. His name is Kojo Ponkroma. And most of us know him as that broadcaster. You mean the Minister for Information? Yes, yeah, okay. Honorable Kojo Ponkroma. And we all know him as that broadcaster who used to host the Super Morning Show on Joy FM after Kumla Dumo left. We all liked his style. We all liked the way he presented on radio. Some of us aspired to be like that. And, and those values he used to espouse on radio, we all aspired to, to espouse those values as well. Yesterday, our information minister sat on national radio on Asempai FM in Accra and said, what happened to me? in his estimation, and it was a suggestive statement, and anyone can conclude that he had an intent of making that comment. He said that we have been in this country, and I'm paraphrasing, where ministers have shot their own vehicles and claimed that they've been shot at. And he went on and on, suggesting as though Prince Minka pretended or perhaps took some stone and hit his own car with a stone or shot his own vehicle in order to call to public sympathy. Uncle Kwesi, you've known me and you've seen me grown in this industry. Would you, and, and I, 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 I am not saying you're a soothsayer, I'm not saying you're someone who can read my mind or my heart, but would you say that I would do anything of such nature and to achieve what purpose? Why would an information minister who is supposed to protect us, who is supposed to speak and, 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 and show some sort of concern if a journalist is being attacked, why would he say something of that nature that me, Prince Minka, would want to court public sympathy so I staged the entire thing? 
I, I felt so embarrassed and so ashamed. And it even amplifies that fear that I have for a number of journalists for this country. That if your government is not in support or does not show concern about your plight, mm. then are we really safe? If he would say all cameras off when there's a press conference, as important as that of the National Communications Authority and whatever it is that is said, and we know the action thereafter, we'll say all cameras off at that time. Are we in an era where information is being curtailed in such a way that it will be skewed to suit the government of the day? These are questions. I'm asking questions. And I'm sure we are appealing to the conscience of Ghanaians, and they would do the conclusion. They would do the conclusion. So that's that's the state we are in, Uncle Kwesi. Okay, we want to go for another short break. And viewers, we are talking to Prince Menka, who is the convener of the Free Media Vanguard. Now, when we come back, I'd like to delve into some of the specifics. Did the radio stations deserve to be closed? Did they infringe on the law? That's the question I'd like to pose to you when we come back from break. Short break. Yes, Dad. Everything has been installed. Yes. Okay. I will be fine, Dad. Yeah, for this debate tonight. Try to guide the keep long, go. go do the far job. Charlie, high tech. She didn't lie bad. Go happen tonight. This is no fence. Get in this time. How come? Security warehouse. Smart choice. I guess you have some footage for me yes. there. Crystal clear picture. Pause. I think I know this man. He has a long history with robbery and rape. You are fortunate to have equipped your house with gadgets from security warehouse. Call it in. We'll begin the investigation from here. Control, come over. Hello, welcome back to Talk Time, and we are in conversation with Prince Menka, the convener of the Free Media Vanguard. Now, about 30 radio stations have been shut down. Did they deserve that? Did they break the law? Is, is the closure justified? The closure, as far as the law is concerned, is not justified. And I'm sure if the NCA should go through their books, legally they will not find any basis for shutting down these radio stations if they are to even rely on the so-called tribunal ruling uh, on electronic uh, communication if they are to rely on that nowhere in that particular ruling has it been stated that the national communications authority can move in in the manner in which they moved in to radio gold radio xyz and many others in that military nature or in that forceful nature to shut down radio stations it was not stated anywhere in that particular ruling and so i'm rather shocked that they will take solace in a certain interpretation their own interpretation of that ruling and say we are moving in to close down the radio stations when in fact the ruling did not actually state that they they have that power or that authority to go and shut down those stations and let me just do a bit of a moral argument here. You've shut down radio stations. You're a government. You say, of course, Lincoln said it, and we all believe in that, uh, for the people, by the people, and all that. It's something they say when we were young, when we were young. And I'm sure most of our politicians recited that. Time has come for you to apply those principles. Now, if you really care about the people and you're for the people, would you want to render the people unemployed would you want to kill businesses? When you say reapply, what does that mean? Reapply for frequencies. What does that mean? It means that I am taking your 90.5 away. I'm taking your 93.1 away and giving you another frequency. Well, we all know that the frequencies in Accra have been exhausted. So what are you trying to do? You moved in on a day where these two radio stations, especially those in Accra, and I'm saying these things in author with authority because I have facts from there. 
the Radio Gold and Radio XY, they were carrying a live broadcast from the headquarters of the NBC. And you know what happened that day, a day before, and the story that was trending on uh, within that period, mm -hmm. of Osama Puffles, mm -hmm. <laughs> back and forth of, 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 of Osama Puffles. And Osama Puffles is the national chairman of the NDC. And the Council of Elders, and I'm sure that some people in authority were, were, were surprised that the Council of Elders would be doing a press conference. And that was big news. A number of the traditional media houses didn't carry it, but Radio Gold and Radio XYZ were carrying that broadcast. And then you move in, in that forceful manner with policemen, armed policemen from the anti-terrorism squad. And you ask yourself if Radio Gold and Radio XYZ, as far as the one District 1 factory is concerned, are factories that produces terrorists. And they were there with their armed men to shut down the radio station when they were broadcasting the, the live feed from, from, from the NDC headquarters. And that is why people will not rule out the political angle that the suspicion that perhaps this is political because these two radio stations are overly critical of government and again morally legally politically it's incorrect and if you say nca my job is to enforce the law i'm just doing my job i'm to regulate i'm to ensure that the right things are done as far as our spectrum is concerned and you have ra owners of radio stations positioning themselves in such a way that we are ready to sit with you. We are ready to give you bankers draft. They gave bankers draft out. You rejected them, told them that, oh, go, we'll come back to you later. What, what sort of game plan is it? You know, and, and you put all these things together and you say, no, you smell a rat. Now, what steps are you taking, I mean, X, Y, Z, to restore the authorization of the station do, i know do you know I, what what i know and i'll just mention what i know what i know is that our managers would want to take that legal step they would want to go to court because as far as the law is concerned there's no basis of shutting down radio xyz i know radio good would also want to take that route as well i know that our bosses have petitioned the special prosecutor i know that uh, what we've done, as far as the free media vanguard is concerned, what we've done so far is to appeal to the conscience of those at the National Communications Authority and those who wield the power in this country to ensure that the right things are done. So all these multifaceted approach is aimed as, at ensuring that the right thing is done. And so we're just hoping and, and, and waiting and, and taking a wait and see posture. If all these things will yield results. So there's court action, there's pressure through the pressure group, and then, of course, you know the usual Ghanaian would want to either pour libation or bend and pray. Well, Prince, thanks very Thank much you for very coming much. to the studio. Thank it's you a humbling much. experience. Well, and uh, viewers, we've been talking to Prince Minka, who is the convener of the Free Media Vanguard. I've been talking about developments in the last two weeks shutdown of radio stations, demonstrations, uh, harassment of some journalists, and so on. And hope that those of you at home uh, have managed through this conversation to come a little close to the truth, and that the conversation will continue even after we've drawn the curtains on talk time for now. Stay with Pan-African Television. You have nothing to lose but everything to gain. We give you the best in everything, best in entertainment, best in sports, best in news, simply best in everything. Stay with us. And until we meet again next week, it's goodbye from all of us at Pan-African Television, including director, uh, Darren, including cameraman, makeup artist, everybody. See you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.